Welcome back to Free Speech Nation. Now, when the government proposed the new policing bill currently going through Parliament, it was designed to help police deal with protests. The irony being that contents of the new bill have actually led to more protests. Almost 600,000 people have signed a petition opposing the bill. So here to discuss it in more detail is Ryan Christopher, Director of ADF International. Thank you so much, Ryan, for joining us. Could you give us some background? A lot of people I don't think are aware of the existence of this bill and what it is intended to achieve. Can you just give us some sort of background to that? Yeah, like lots of big changes to public order law over the years, um, particularly over the last 35 years. Yeah. The intention's supposedly good. It's to um, increase the powers of the police and local authorities to deal with really super disruptive protests. Think about the Extinction Rebellion protests in 2019 that have now become very famous. I was yep. living in London at the time and I couldn't commute properly for two weeks yep. or, or so. So the police, I think, the, the government, I believe, uh, want the police to have more powers to deal with protests in particular that totally shut down regular life in society like we saw in central London yep. at the time. So the intention, one might argue, is, is very good. We saw good intentions with the Public Order Act in 1986, the last major uh, legislative change. Yep. And that was to deal with football hooliganism. But the effect of that legislation has meant that little old ladies saying fairly innocuous things are being arrested on a regular basis. So we have a bad situation in public order law, and our fear is that this new bill going through is going to make it worse. But can you explain? See, one thing I don't understand is, surely, that kind of disruption that you're describing, what we had at the M25 the other week with the Extinction yeah. Rebellion, them smashing up uh, various uh, bank doors and things like that, that's already illegal, right? So it's already illegal to disrupt in that way. All of that is covered uh, probably in the Public Order Act 1986 already. So why do we need further legislation to deal with that if it's already on the statute books? The problem is, from the government's point of view and from a pure policing point of view, pragmatically, um, you can block a highway for a certain period of time, okay. arguably, because before the Public Order Act kicks in or the Highways Act kicks in that stops you blocking a highway, you have fundamental rights to expression, to protest. Yeah. And they should be taken really seriously. And the bar by which you can stop people doing that should be high. That's according to the Human Rights Act, that's yep. according to the European Convention on Human Rights. And so what we've often found is it's ended up with the higher courts making the decision in particular circumstances where roadways are blocked yep. as to whether that's a proportionate interference or not by, by the protesters. And what the government wants to do is just say, you know what, we're getting rid of you now. Simple as, oh, no, you can't do that um, from the beginning. So, OK, let's just be clear about what the bill is, su is suggesting. Now, I've been reading about this even to the extent of noise. So mm. they're suggesting that if a, a protest is too noisy, they can legitimately uh, shut it down under this new legislation. Now, protests are noisy, yeah. right? That's sort of part of the point. It's how you make your voice heard. It's, 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 it's what happens. You know, I've, I don't like protests because I don't like crowds. Right? <laughs> yeah. I don't. I had to walk out of the Lady Gaga concert for, <laughs> for that very same reason. But don't you feel that that's like... It's just, almost, it's, it's just stifling. Something quite... Well, uh, the fundamental right of free assembly... And free expression, is that not part of this? Yes, yeah, exactly. It's the point of protest is, is to make some order of noise. Uh, and again, when the courts are going to interfere, only if that noise is in a disproportionate way that affects people disproportionately, yeah. rightly so. But this bill also includes other ambiguous and, and really innocuous, supposedly innocuous terms, like if you cause unease to the local area or you what have... What does that a, mean? A, exactly. There is no meaning in law yet as to what causing unease actually means. And so what this bill enables a, a senior policeman to do is say, hey, you might have a, I don't know, it might be a radical feminist protest. I'm not saying you would have a radical feminist protest. I could have a radical <laughs> feminist <laughs> yeah, Maybe protest. you would, yeah. yeah. Um, you know, in Paddington, for example. Um, and a senior police officer, if this bill goes through as it is, could say that protest of one person now, because protest has been changed from at least three people to now one person yeah. only, could cause unease in the area. And that, under the legislation, would mean there's a serious impact on the locality. And therefore, a police officer, one police officer could say, you're not doing it, or impose really serious conditions on how you express yourself. So it's not just noise, it's, it's, it's the threshold by which you could become a criminal has, has been massively lowered. Yes. Now, the law as it stands, I think, is pretty reasonable. Yeah. A, a policeman can only stop you protesting, can only stop you doing certain things on that protest or say where it is or how many if it's going to cause serious public disorder yeah. or violence of yeah. some kind. That's a fairly sensible threshold by any, by any means. But for serious impact to mean potentially unease or serious inconvenience 
as the legislation includes, is going to be really problematic. Do the police want this? I mean, <laughs> I, I would, if I was a police officer and I had suddenly had this power yeah. to decide what was a legitimate protest, what was not, what protests were too noisy, if I had that, I might be a bit nervous of being accused of being overly politicised if I exercised those, those rights. 100%. The, the Association of Police and Crime Commissions have said, we don't need it, we don't want it, it's anti-democratic. Oh, that's actually come from the police as well? Yeah, the Police and Crime Commissioners... Right. Um, other police bodies have said we do welcome the powers, to be fair. But well, who, wouldn't? Say, who doesn't want power? Exactly. Right? Well, yeah. that's the thing. Uh, it, put yourself in, in, in the shoes of your average Bobby on the street. Like, who wants to be in that position of being the arbiter of what acceptable speech or expression is? That's a really unfair well, position. But also the police are currently are often accused of being overly politicised. I mean, you see a lot of their TikTok videos about sort of LGBT yeah. issues and things like yeah. that, but you also see them very much rigorously policing what people say online or even putting tweets out yeah. saying we'll be knocking on your door if you say something offensive, things that are beyond the parameters of what their responsibility ought to be already. So you've got that problem going on. And then you see people s suggesting that there's double standards. So, for instance, mm. they will crack down on the, the Sarah Everard po protest in yeah. London. Yeah. They didn't with the Black Lives Matter yeah. protest, and, it, and people start to assume that the, the, there's a kind of... They're not, in other words, they're not impartial when it comes to political... And that, that is, I'm not saying that's my perception, but I'm saying that is a common perception. Won't this make that worse? It'll make it much worse. And what it's doing is it's, it's skewing where that political decision-making is supposed to be. That political yeah. decision-making isn't meant to be a senior police officer or the individual policeman. It's meant to be Parliament. Yeah. It's Parliament's duty to, to make re legislation that's really carefully framed yeah. so that policemen aren't left in this invidious position yeah. in practice. Where are we with this bill at this moment? Yeah, we're, we're in the House of Lords and it's about to go through um, committee stage in October. Yeah. So we could be a few months away from this legislation being the real deal. And what do you streets. think are the odds that it will go through unamended? I think it's likely there'll be amendments, but the government are going to whip heavily. This is such core legislation for this government that yeah. they will, it'll be three-line whip and I think they'll get it through. But that's really disturbing. Well, I find that quite disturbing because I think, you know, is there any opposition at all uh, in Parliament on this? And, and is it going to have any kind of effect? Yeah, there's real disquiet. One of the things about this bill is it's united libertarians or, or hardcore right-wingers in the Tory party all the way through to, you know, Caroline Lucas and Jeremy Corbyn on the other side. Yes, because it doesn't side. feel like a politically, uh, you know, it, this crosses all... Because it's just about basic fundamental liberal values and the right to free assembly, it is. isn't it? Which exactly. is surely uh, something that everyone, right or left or centrist, whatever, can get on board with. Yeah, exactly. And, and we're hoping that the Lords will introduce amendments, some, some very big overarching free speech protections yes. as, as amendments, or at the very least, if you're going to introduce this, you need to put a new duty for police to be trained. Okay. Uh, you know, with regards to balancing fundamental rights. And um, we're worried at the moment that police officers don't have those tools in their kit bag, not to blame policemen. We just don't yeah. think they're getting the, the appropriate training to balance these things. And, and what do you say to critics who will say, but the thing is, we need this because we see all these videos of, of Extinction Rebellion protesters mm. committing acts of vandalism. It's actually mm. criminal damage. Yeah. And the police standing by and doing nothing, or the statue of Edward Colston being toppled in Bristol, and they literally stood by. In fact, I think the chief of police said yeah. they, they stood by and allowed it to happen. So, so, so wouldn't the counter-argument be that we need, they need to have the security of this legislation to know that they can intervene when they need to intervene. That's what the, that's what the government's saying, exactly. We, we, we need the security of being able to definitely do this. The question is, how much inconvenience or how much ambiguity are you prepared to suffer mm. for the sake of a, a flourishing democracy, I think, is, is the counter-argument. Yeah. Um, minor inconvenience for part of a day for one section of London is one thing. The whole of London being shut down for two weeks or the whole of central London being shut down for two weeks is, is another. Yes. And what we found is the courts have said with the former scenario... Actually, for the sake of democracy, maybe you should put up with that minor inconvenience for a few hours. Yeah. But the latter, I think, is, is, is clearly there's a threshold there, um, yes. particularly if it involves violence or, or, or real severe uh, kind of threatening behaviour. Well, I think that's the difference, isn't it? That, you know, it's the right to peaceful protest has to ma be maintained, and it looks a little bit like this legislation will curb peaceful protest Absolutely. as well as criminal protest. Absolutely. And the, the other controversial part, part to this legislation is that redefining what is going to have an impact on the community, that the power to do that will be given to the Secretary of State. So instead yeah. of any future changes to the threshold of criminality for protesters going through a positive vote of Parliament, it'll be up to whoever is in the Home Office to say, we're going to change what we say serious impact is on the locality, mm. thereby changing the threshold by which expressive rights um, are, are criminalised. That's not a good way to do legislation. That's, that's seriously illiberal, actually.
Welcome to the GB News YouTube channel. You can watch us live 24 hours a day, catch up on your favorite shows, and join in the conversation in the comments below. Don't forget to subscribe and you'll never miss any of our exclusive content.